How's everybody tonight? Blessed, highly favored, prosperous, victorious, anointed, ready to go forth, kick some butt. Amen. Drive out the enemy. Make room for Jesus. Slap the hell out of the enemy and make room for Jesus, right? <laughs> Glory. This is the night the Lord has made. And we will rejoice. Because we have the choice and the power to choose. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you got power, brother and sister. We don't want any of that in here, will we? <laughs> Glory. Ecclesiastics. Sounds like an exercise. <laughs> oh, Elliot, what are you doing, Ecclesiastics? <laughs> Woohoo! Now oh, you're working out. Praise God. It's about time. Chapter 12. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? What you sow is what you, what you eat is what you become. Glory. In verse 1, let's speak it. Remember now you're who? You're your creator. In the days of your youth, before the difficult days come. Then this is powerful. In other words, don't forget. <laughs> don't forget your creator when difficult times come. Before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds do not return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men bow, bow down, when the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look through the windows grow dim, when the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of grinding is low, when one rises at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of music are brought low, also they are afraid of height and terrors in the way. When the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper is burdened and desire fails, for man goes to his eternal home. The mourners go about the streets. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the well. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Vanity, vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find acceptable words, and what was written was upright words of truth. The words of the wise are the goads, and the words of the scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. And further, my son, be admonished by these, O make, of making many books there is no end, and much study is weariness to the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Now this is very powerful because in the beginning he says, Remember your creator. Remember you were created. Amen. We were created. Remember the one who created you. And there's something of a conclusion. Because we must remember this, we must maintain a reverence and honor and respect or what we call the fear of the Lord. When that is lost, when that is broken, when that is defiled, 
the creator is forgotten. Does everybody understand? And one of the things that people fall into the area of regret of losing or never connecting to the fear of God. Many people lose the fear of God. And they lose the reality of the creator and of creation. There's something else that they lose the reality that the coming of the end. Everything has an end. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Everything has a beginning and everything has an end. In other words, to know that, to make a reality to you, to make a place of understanding that no matter what you start, there will be an end. Everything that you start, there's a completion of it. Even we. <laughs> Amen? We are uh, a new creation. In other words, we are born in this realm, but we are a new creation. But we didn't become a new creation until the first part of our creation came to an end. Everything must come to an end. Jesus gave us the formula, of course. He said, deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow, which is the law of the spirit of life. Too many times people are trying to redo. They're always trying to redo. See, in that we fall into a place of regret. Well, I should have. And everything that you and I go through will be an end of something, whether we blow it or not, whether we make a mistake or we made wrong decisions. Some of those things have brought an end to something. It's not an area of redo. It's an area of making things new. Does everybody understand? Everyone has regrets of some sort. But we can't allow our regrets to connect us to our past. They must be cut loose. Or else you can't start new. Everything must come to an end. Everything. There is a coming end to everything. And we're the ones that get in a way. So we want to cooperate with God. Remember, Jesus had to come to the end. And look what happened. It brought me a new, new life. Amen? So in everything that you and I are doing, we've always got to look at the area that there is a creator. I'm his creation. But I'm his new creation now. Amen? I'm his new creation. And because I'm his new creation now, old things have passed away, the word says, and all things are becoming new. But they don't become new without cooperating. Remember, the price is cooperation. So you may have made a special cake with special fruits in it and all kinds of things. You had a special recipe that was handed down. And you forgot something. And it tasted not as good as you wanted it to be. So you decided to make another one. Well, that's called the potter's wheel. <laughs> See, God puts us on the potter's wheel. When he sees something that's marred, not right, whatever, he says, hold on. He puts us back on the potter's wheel and gently crushes us. Sometimes you don't even know you're being crushed until you realize you're crushed. <laughs> Gosh, when did this start? Who cares? See, even chastening from the Lord is a part of the crushing. Amen? In the crushing, you know, when you crush olives and you crush grapes, you produce oil and you produce wine. So everybody goes through a crushing. There's got to be an end of everything that you and I are doing for something to begin new. In other words, so you may have had a plan about doing something. God's doing something in your life, and all of a sudden, even though it may be the same, or same path. He says, wait, there's something I want to add to this. 
He doesn't just add to it. He pulls it back, makes an end of what's going on, and starts new. Does everybody get this? We fight to continue instead of surrendering and allow him to make things new. We're always fighting to, wait a minute, i, I got to stay on this path. Wait a minute. Let it come to an end and let him bring it new. Because when it comes new, it comes better. When it comes new, it becomes larger. When it becomes new, it becomes refreshed. There's a newness in you. There's a fresh atmosphere around you. It's like being born all over again. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Isaiah 65. It doesn't mean you throw the recipe out. Amen? It means you burn it. <laughs> yeah, you bury it. Because you got a new one, right? So if the one you have now is better, why would you keep the old one? Everybody has a tendency to keep it, just in case. Don't even know why, just in case. Some people are still holding on to some old phone numbers, just in case. Some old websites, just in case. Some old emails, just in case. And God is saying, bury them, cut loose from them, extinguish them. Because I can't allow you to go any further. See, people don't even realize those are little things that leaven the whole lump. But it's just a phone number. No, it's a connection. If it's not cut loose, it's got a hold on you. And it's preventing you from getting going up to the next level in process of new. Everything must come to a what? End. Isaiah 65, verse 17. Let's speak it. For behold, I create what? New heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Now think about that. I really believe that when we go home, you're not going to remember this place. Why? It's going to be brand new. Listen, God's going to cook it all. He's going to burn the whole place up. The universe, everything. Nothing is going to escape in all of creation. Everything's going to be brand new. And so are me and you. We will think differently. You know, right now we have people, we have dreams. You know, we have people that have been taken home and so forth. But it's all brought back under, to the understanding of this temporary realm. But when this temporary realm burns up, it's different. We will be different. You're not going to want to think about times here. It's disgusting. Amen? It's about, it's about like thinking about your old life always all the time and the things that we did that were stupid. Amen? Heck, when we get out of here, who wants to know? I mean, you talk to somebody that's been dead and, somebody, and, and they come back alive, they're like, what? Smith Wigglesworth has rose his wife back from the dead because he didn't get to say goodbye. Boy, was she ticked. What are you doing, Smith? I was with the Lord. I was with the Lord. Hello. You and I are history. I'm with the Lord. See, everything here is history when we're home. <laughs> There's not about marriages and all these other things. None of that's about that. There won't be, a ch you know, you won't have to have children. And uh, there won't we'll be a huge family that God has been producing for thousands of years. Amen? 
for thousands of years, you and I have brothers and sisters, that we're going to be a part of a whole new creation beyond the universe. The universe will be a small thing compared to what we're going to enter. But we're little peanut brains have a hard time with that. We're still fighting to hold on to what we have. Let go. Everything must come to an end. Verse 18. But be what? Glad and rejoice for forever in what I create, says the Lord. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor voice of crying. No more shall an infant from the, there live but a few days. And an old man who has not fulfilled his days for the children shall die 100 years old, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble, for they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, says the Lord. Now, I really believe this is predestined and prophesied for the thousand-year reign. Because there won't be like that after that. Amen? He says, new heaven, new earth starts by an atmosphere change. How many of y'all were having an atmosphere change right now? And it's not global warming. Hello? It's eternal warming called God's heat, his fire. It's changing things. Amen? There's a, re a beginning of a removal of corruption and destruction regimes controlled by evil forces. <laughs> Why? Because we're preparing to enter, enter the millennium thousand-year reign. God is preparing me and you for that right now. Go to 2 Peter 3. Second Peter chapter three. And verse ten. Second Peter three ten. Hallelujah. Coming end, the coming end. It's the name of it, just in case you Hallelujah. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in a night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be what? Burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the Scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, 
beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the plan of escape. Hello, that's what grace is. And knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever and ever and ever. The day the Lord will bring a new heaven and a new earth. For the new creations in Christ, we look forward to knowing the area of this time. Amen? <laughs> it is not, this. remember, this is not our home. People are still trying to make this place their home. It's not our own, and it's not our home. Amen? We are, <laughs> we are on what we call bowered time. And where do we bower this time from? The Lord. He's given you and I bowered time because there's an end to everything to get things together, to be trained. Amen? We are on bowered time from God as a timeless new creation to be trained, tested, qualified for the future. For, to serve the purpose of God. Remember, the creator is the source of all creation. Nothing else. He is. And Revelation chapter 3. You know, I used to hear that saying, Bower time. I wonder, where I, but at the time when I was a child, I didn't understand Bower time. I used to hear my parents talk about Bower time. I thought, who are they borrowed from? And how do you return it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Revelation 3 7. Again, we are on borrowed time from God as timeless new creations to be trained, tested, and qualified for the future purposes of God. The future purposes of God. He qualifies you to fit in a certain purpose. Amen? In verse 7. Is everybody there? And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shut and shuts and no one opens. He says, I know your works. See, I have set you before an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. And to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my commandment to persevere. I also will keep you from the hour of trial. Which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on it. What is that hour of trial? It's called tribulation. Behold I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have. That no one may take your crown. Your crown. He who what? overcomes I will make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God the new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God and I will write on him my new name he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches powerful so he's talking about a faithful servant who keeps his word and not denied his name. How do you deny his name? In your conduct. In your reactions. Amen. The sin of God of Satan's members will come and bow to the new creations of Christ Jesus. We will understand that more. This has got nothing to do with pride or arrogance. It has to do with humility. But the synagogues of Satan's members will come before you because they'll have to bow before Jesus. That means they'll have to bow before you. 
Does everybody understand that? Why? Because we are joint heirs of Christ. Oh, let that become an I identity to who you are. See, that is also in authority. If you know who you are, and the powers of darkness know whether you know or not, they have to bow to what you say. I didn't say worship you. Somebody understand it? I said bow. It never said that, he, that Jesus would send them to worship us. It said that they would bow before us because they would have to submit. Everybody okay? Praise God. So what does he say? He says, man, hold fast to your call and purpose and mission. Fulfill your destiny. Amen? Well, then you will receive the crown of glory. You'll receive a new name. You'll be living in a new created city called Jerusalem. And you'll be sealed with his new name if you're fixed on him. Amen? You know, the word tells us about he who sets his mind on the Lord has peace. It's when people become anxious and all this other stuff and goofy because their mind's not set on the Lord. Then that means they're disconnected somehow. Remember, the enemy's always trying to disconnect, isn't he? Coming, everything is coming to an end. For what? Not the end of everything. Everything is coming to an end to bring a what? New. Again, so when you're going through stuff, everyone say stuff. You're going to enter a holy shift. And if you're not willing to let go of the stuff, you can't go on. You'll stay in that same path. And you'll try and fix it. And you'll pray. And you'll fast. And you'll repent. And nothing will change. Until you're willing to let it come to an end. Amen? Does everybody get it? See, when you come to an end, that means you've come to a dead end. When you come to a dead end, that means God has got another path for you. Amen? That means he's putting, going to build something new. So all of our stupid mistakes are turning to, that's what the word says, what? All things are what? Working to the good, to those who what? Love him and are called according to his purpose. So you're not redoing. Everyone say, I'm not redoing. Redoing brings regret. I'm not starting over. Come on, say it. I'm starting new. Oh, glory. Romans 1. So when we go back to that same scripture, you're not doing it over. You're starting new. <laughs> now, of course, you have to have wisdom, right? Because the enemy's going to try to reconnect you to all of this stuff. And verse 18, 118. <clears throat> So those who are not willing to go into the new will be a part of the old. Amen? Remember, God chastens us and corrects us and so forth to get us on path. It says, I was afflicted when I what? Went astray. In other words, I went astray off path. I did something, and then I'm still trying to repair it, or I'm staying on that same path instead of God allowing, wanting me to do something new. Traditions need to break. Verse 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Who what? They suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, 
even his eternal power in Godhead so that they are without excuse. So you can't make any excuses. You have a choice to surrender, cooperate, or be rebellious. No buts. Amen. This is not the but ministry. Verse 21. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. They were professing to be wise. They became fools. And they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Let me explain to you who the creature is. He is called the beast. Does everybody get it? He is the beast. These beasts are called fallen angels. They are called false deities, gods, and goddesses. They are beasts, but they're not the true God. They think they're gods. They think they're the special elite. Amen? Usually because of how they were brought up in this world. It says in verse 26, For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men are committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves a penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, why? Because of conviction. God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of evil, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whispers. They are backbiters. They are haters of God. They are violent. They are proud. They're boasters. They're inventors of evil things. They're disobedient to parents. They're undiscerning and untrustworthy. They're unloving and unforgiving. They're unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those of them who practice such things. Again, the wrath of God is an after- it comes after judgment. Amen? In other words, there's no escaping his judgment. Wrath means you're held in. You don't escape. You will receive judgment. Does everybody understand that? That's what wrath is. Wrath is you are held in. You will not escape the judgment. What is it? It is the judgment of punishment. Nobody escapes. When the wrath of God comes, nobody escapes the judgment of punishment. Now, there's an area where you and I are being judged by God in certain areas. Amen? That's where we get convicted. We get chastened. We get rebuked. But it's not God's wrath. God's wrath is no escaping the punishment of the judgment. Because it is no, now punishment. And it's not for correction or direction. It is punishment. That's the difference. I don't think anyone wants to go under the punishment of God. You'd have to be an idiot, you know. Hallelujah. Now, no, in other words, they sold their birthright and position as a servant to righteousness to a servant of the sin of God as Satan worshipers. They began to worship the creatures, the beasts, fallen angels, false deities, and now are cursed children of evil. They have a form of godliness, but no power. Everyone say no power. The only thing they have is a big mouth. They lie and they do everything else. But they have no power to overcome evil desires or passions. They can't overcome lust and deception. And they love the world. They accept and approve of 
Accepting and approving and promoting all the things that God hates. These are servants of evil. Amen. In John chapter 8. Hallelujah. The coming end. Everything must come to an end. In verse 37. Jesus said, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. See, a lot of people read the word, speak the word, but they don't allow it to have a place in them. Because they don't really understand the word of God. The word of God are the words of God. If they are the words of God, it means they have life. His words breathe. If they have life, they are life-giving. See, when you associate with this book that has recorded the words of God, it's not just the word of God. These are the words of God Almighty that were spoken and recorded. It is the Spirit who brings life. So the Spirit in you who begins to take these words, because he wrote this, he begins to become up to where it becomes food to you because it is life. His words are breathing. They have a pulse to them. There's a radiance to every word of his. They're, they're releasing they're drawing mankind. They're feeding mankind's spirit. They're healing. There's changing. Every time you and I are in the Word of God, there's a new change in you. You may not, it doesn't mean you have to feel it. Because we don't allow feelings to dictate. But there is a place that you do know the you have more peace. You have more clarity. You have more understanding. You have a thirst and hunger for more. God always brings a thirst and hunger for more. Why? Because he loves to be chased. He loves to be sought after. Because he knows that when you come towards him, you have to shed you. And the more you shed yourself, the more you become like him. That's what he's looking for, him in you. Amen? That is the completion. It says that when we awake, we will be in his likeness. Amen? Praise God. So don't stay asleep. Make sure you get up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Oh, hallelujah. All right, let's go a little further. Now, uh, ver verse 41. You do the, uh, did we get this far yet? Where are we at? 37, we're still at 37? We just started there. Well, snap. Okay, 38. <laughs> I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. And they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. 
Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my words. Why? Because only his eat his words. Everything, everyone else, it bounces off until there's a place of repentance. Because the blood always goes before the Spirit. The blood cleanses away for the Word. Verse 42. Let's speak it. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Wow. Not able to comprehend his words. Why? Because they are life, they're life changing, and they're life giving. The makeup of all creation is by God's words. Hmm. Not knowing, and some knowing, they are servants of Satan's kingdom. And their source is the serpent beast of Lucifer, whether they know it or not. You're either following Christ or you're following the serpent, one or the other. You serve one or the other. First Thessalonians 4. If you're serving yourself, you're serving the serpent. But everything must come to an end. First Thessalonians 4. There's a point when you are out there indulging in the lusts of the world where the world eventually doesn't treat you so well. See, when the world is done with you, they want to kill you. God knows that. Every one of us in here was close to death at one time especially those of us who served darkness and drugs and alcohol and so forth. When we were finally coming to the end, because the world didn't, couldn't find any more use for us, except for the feed demons. We were just food for demons at a point. Then it was time to remove us. But when the serpent made the move to remove us, God stepped in. And he said, not yet, homie. This one's mine. And he pulled us out of the darkness and gave us an opportunity to cooperate. I didn't get to share with you, but I, I share with my wife that I, last service, I had a vision. And the Lord reminded me of the next morning. And in the vision while we were worshiping, we were in a holy place. And the holy of holies, there was just glimpses of light flickering like um, it was still dim. And the holy of holies, I saw two hands open. And I can only see a face. And Coming out of the Holy of Holies was an invitation. Invitations all over. The, just flying out. <laughs> invitations for everyone to come into the most holy place. And I thought, wow. Here the Lord was peeking out and sending out invitations. <laughs> come on in. A little closer. A little longer. A little more. And I knew that as the the invitation was going out. 
And people began to press in that the curtain was opening more and more and more. But in this, gosh, when, when, when we begin to press in in that, God begins to, we begin to touch his heart. He touches our heart, but he didn't. He sends an invitation for more. Come on. It's okay. Come on. Gosh, did we do enough, Lord? Come on. Come on. You see, he wants to get to a place where he can actually hold you. My daughter used to say that all. There's, there's a famous word she had, hold you. When she was real little, she'd lift her hands up and say, hold you. It was a major word, this and more. That's what she knew, sign language, more. More food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or more whatever, but hold you. And, and it always reminds me of how we are with the Lord. I mean, we should be going, hold you. Hold you, hold you. As he said, come childlike, you know. When you get in God's presence, don't be an adult. <laughs> Leave that outside. <laughs> Praise God. No, it says no adults. There's a sign in there. Most holy place, no adults. <laughs> there's, no, there's no child care in the most holy place, amen. <laughs> we come in as children, amen, of the Most High God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Let's speak. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor or fear of the Lord, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God or the servants of evil who do not know God, that no one should take advantage and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness but holiness. Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. He says you are to know how to possess your own vessel in sanctification in the fear of the Lord. Let me share with you. If you are possessed from the future, amen, if you're possessed from the future, the eternal realm of Christ, you possess the temporary. It isn't until you are possessed from the future that you have the authority to possess the present which we call the temporary. Possessing means you have control over it. So when eternity, the future has control over you, that's God's words that are breathing, that's his promises, it's his covenant, it's your relationship, it's your connection. When you are possessed with it, that's why the word tells us, set your mind on the things from above. When you are possessed in this love affair with him, you are now in a position of possession of everything here. It is when, see, the exchange, the battle of exchange is constant. Because the enemy is trying to always get you to release your positional authority. Amen? And compromise. That's why compromise is so deadly. Compromise is biting the bait of Satan. Amen? So to be possessed from the future, you are meeting all the conditions and requirements approved by God. To be possessed from the future. Amen? You are now meeting all the, require, all the conditions and requirements which is approved by God, which gives you positional authority and possession. It 
So that means, again, everything comes to an end. Everything is constantly coming to an end. For what? New. New. The coming end of everything. Everything we're doing. Everything that goes on. It may be the same thing, but in that, something's coming to an end. Your vehicle doesn't last forever. Amen? Your animals don't last forever. Although I think mine do. I don't know. <laughs> Things don't last forever. Amen? They wear out or they come to an end. And the enemy wants to wear us out. So that you come to an end in the area of exchanging your possessed position from the future. And you become content with the things of the present. Now you have compromised. You've become lukewarm. And you're dangerous. Because people become unstable in that condition. They're up and down. They're emotional roller coasters. Everybody okay? Second Timothy two. You know, people that have an emotional roller coaster, they look like they just came off the roller coaster. Did you ever see somebody like that? Snap. Second Timothy two twenty one. Oh glory. Let's speak it. Therefore, if anyone what? If anyone what? If anyone cleanses. Okay, let's talk about cleansing. In this, he's not talking about washing. Amen. He's talking about ending. He's talking about what? Ending. Watch what he says. Therefore, if anyone cleanses his cell from the what? Let, in other words, end. He will be a vessel of on, for honor. A vessel for honor. Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. What does he talk about? He's Now he's warning us about going back again. Flee also youthful lusts. But pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. Listen, associations bring what? Impartations. Don't hang around with people that live a life of broken vows. Does everybody understand that? You don't want to associate with people that are constantly breaking vows. Why? Until they come out of that lifestyle. Because it's going to affect you. Does everybody get that? Associations bring impartations. Flee youthful loss. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate what? Strife. And a servant of the Lord, not a servant of Satan... A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be what? Gentle to all and able to what? Teach. This is what he's saying, a servant of the Lord. Listen, every one of you in here is to be a servant of the Lord. You should be able to teach. Every one of you in this room should be able to get up at any time behind this pulpit and teach. Everyone should always have a teaching ready or multiple. If you're not there, then you better get there. Hallelujah. Or you'll get there. <laughs> Hallelujah. One day I'm just going to say, oh, uh, you teach tonight. Probably nobody will show up next Sunday. but <laughs> <laughs> He ain't calling me. It says be ready in season and out, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Some of you might just pass out right there. <laughs> we don't have to lay hands on you. <laughs> Glory, verse 24 again. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, and what? Patient, which means endure. In what? Humility, not pridefulness. Correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they what? May know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Coming to an end of self because we want to become vessels of honor. A servant of the Lord never looks back. Doesn't look back. Didn't say you wouldn't be tempted to look back. Didn't say you would be drawn to look back, but you don't go there. Amen. Remember what happened to Lot's wife? She looked back. That was the last look back she had. Hallelujah. We're always breaking away from those places, people, and things that have broken away from God's plan of grace. So we, you and I are always breaking away from people, places, and things that have broken away from God's plan. We don't want to associate with it. We want to be an example to him. We want to be an outreach, uh, a hand to say, come, amen. But we don't fellowship with them. We are an example to them, amen. They are not our brothers and sisters. They may be friends, but they're still your enemy until they're unplugged. Amen? And, and plugged into Christ. Daniel 12. Daniel chapter 12. So we never again want to look at starting over again as a defeat, failure, or punishment because we're not starting over again. Amen? We are looking at the coming of the end of it. Amen? <laughs> With a new beginning. Why? For perfection. We're now we're perfecting it. Hallelujah. Daniel 2, I mean 12, sorry. Daniel. Daniel chapter 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, and that's talking about Israel. Even to that time, and at the time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the what? The book. That's the book of life, just in case. Not a storybook or a novel. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt or hell. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many will run to and fro. And knowledge, that word knowledge here means technology, will increase. One of the things that the enemy has been doing, planning, and attempting it's a constant replay, constantly replace technology for God. And he's doing a very good job. Artificial intelligence, AI, is replacing God to many people, has replaced God to many people. They no longer seek the Lord for an answer, they just Google it. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's some things you can Google. But always seek ye the kingdom of God first. Lord, what do you think? What should I do? Where do you want me to go? 
So you always acknowledge him first before you start Googling your fingers off. Amen? Remember, Google turns you into a Google. Technology, artificial intelligence, has specific waves. Its purpose is to dumb us down, mind control us, and bring us in a place where there's a disconnect from God's presence. That's the purpose. That's why the Word tells us in the book of Revelation that many will worship the image of the beast. That is technology. That is artificial intelligence. Many are worshiping that beast right now and don't even know it. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. In verse 5, Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this side of the river and the other on the other side of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How long shall the, what? the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and it shall be for time, times and a half, which is three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people have been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Now I want you to understand it says talking about the, sh the shattering of the holy people. That is Israel. Amen? That is not the body of Christ. These are Jews. And verse 9, And he shall go, and he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the end of the 1,335 days. But you go your way to the end, for you shall rest and arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. Powerful. Now, the enemies attempt again to replace God with lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, which has increased through technology. It's a demonic frequency. It brings mind control. How else does he do that? Through medications. Amen? Through music. Hollow imaging. Love of money. All promoted by advanced technology called artificial intelligence and hope to create a breakaway civilization from the righteousness of God. They infuse a false reality, a false future controlled by technology and not by God. See, there is already a breakaway civilization. There is already one. It's broken away from the righteousness of God. They are called the elite. They believe that their wealth, their technology, is above all things. Believe me, they have transporters. They have stargates. They have all kinds of things that you and I don't even comprehend because they are connected to the demonic realm of the fallen angels who have technology. And they've shared this technology with humans. And these humans have now become what they call the elite. That's what's called the deep state. Now, the deep state is the lower level of them. They're just servants of darkness until they can just toss them at any time they want. But there's already off-planet places. There's already things going on. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because God has the last say. Amen? See, they think they can live forever through their technology. Some of them are frozen. Some of them are hibernating. I don't know. Thinking that they're going to live forever. Never going to lose their wealth and, and all kinds of things. Storing up all their gold and silver 
when the word tells us that at some point in time they'll throw it in the streets and it won't mean nothing. Because you can't buy your way out of hell. You sow your way out. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Things are happening. Second Timothy 2. Is everybody okay? Oh, snap. Glory. Second Timothy two and verse one. Let's speak it together. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to who? Faithful men who will be able to what? Teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one what? Engage in the warfare, entangles himself in the affairs of this life. In other words, entangles himself with the technology of this life. In other words, we cannot allow it to use us. Or to use it. Amen. And that's not going to happen unless you're possessed by the future. Because there's a limitation that the Holy Spirit has. He has boundaries for each and every one of us. We're to know those boundaries and be sensitive to them. Until the boundaries are removed where he can trust you. Then you sense your own boundaries. Does everybody understand that? But he's got boundaries. And they're like little bumper things, like a baby, you know. Bumpers in the crib and stuff like that. You know? Bumper cars, you know, everything. Is, so that no one hurts. But again, these boundaries are important so that we don't fall into the trap of the enemy or go beyond what we're supposed to. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the what? Rules or ways of God. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer troubles and even do over, even to a point of change. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithless, faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remember them, these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And their message will spread like cancer. Hynamius and Faltus are of this sort. We have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from what? Iniquity. Powerful. And let's close at 1 Corinthians 4, because I have more. Hallelujah. The coming end. It's a beautiful thing. Hallelujah.
Were you ever working on a job when it came to an end? Of course. Did you freak out or you just trusted God that he's got something better? You know, we get promoted and think we got demoted. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter four, verse one. Consider us as what? Servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by your human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified to, by this. But he who judges me is who? The Lord. So if you've got a relationship with the Lord, you're being judged all the time. Just by walking with him, believe me, you're being judged. His presence is instant judgment. Amen? And you don't have to add nothing to it. It's instant. Boom. In his presence. As soon as you look to him and say, Lord, it's instant judgment. You know. We should look for conviction. Lord, what is it? What am I doing? It should be constant. Why? Because there's a relationship. Verse 5, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Now these things, brethren, I have, have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, that you may learn in us not to think beyond what it is written, that none of you may be puffed up on behalf of one another against the other hmm. for who makes you differ from anyone and what do you have that you did not receive now if you did indeed receive it why do you boast as if you had not received it you are already full you are already rich you have reigned as kings without us and indeed i could wish you to did reign that we also might reign with you for i think that god has displaced us the apostles last as men condemned to death for we have been made a spectacle to the world both to angels and to men we are fools for christ's sake but you are wise in christ we are weak but you are strong we are distinguished but we are dishonored to present our to both hunger and thirst to present i'm sorry to present our both hunger and thirst and we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless. And we labor working with our own hands, being reviled. We bless, being persecuted, we endure. Being disfamed, we entreat. We have been made as the filth of the world, the offscoring of all things until now. I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore I urge you, imitate me. Amen. For this reason I have sent Tim Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in the ch every church. Now some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you. But I will come to you shortly. If the Lord wills, and I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Why do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love and a spirit of gentleness? Again, never look at the arena where you're starting over. Amen. As for the area of defeat or failure or punishment. Look at everything coming to an end. Why? To create perfection and a new beginning. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored. Now listen, it doesn't mean go out there and do something stupid, all right? It's the Bible says make no place to the devil either. Amen? All right. Father, we give you all the glory and honor and praise. We thank you. We are honored and blessed to be your offspring and children. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Help us to come to the end of ourselves, the end of our emotional 
idols the end of fulfilling false vows but fulfill everything you've asked us to do according to your will in Jesus name and everybody said amen, amen. praise God be blessed and stay dressed with the glory <laughs>